Hey guys, remember the time when being a video game action figure collector meant um, having to spend top dollar on high-end collector's figures like Figma or D-Arts or something like that? Do you remember how great it was when we found out that Jax Pacific would be doing the World of Nintendo line? And they, fo and, they, and they followed through by making really cool action figures of iconic characters that normally only get the high-end figure treatment at much more affordable prices. Um, yeah, I, I remember that part. But there was always a little bit of a lamentation because we know that Jax Pacific, although they do have a fairly broad license with World of Nintendo, there were just certain properties that they wouldn't be able to make. Like, we'd never get a Sonic that could truly scale with a Mario figure because um, you know, they don't have license from Sega, only Nintendo. And they couldn't even make Pokemon characters because it's actually Tomy that has a license to make them. Well, uh, today, whilst unpacking some merchandise for Christmas shoppers at my job, I, I happened to come across the new wave of the uh, Pokemon Heroes line. And everyone with a Smash Brothers display rejoiced. That's right, here we have the Pokemon Heroes Mewtwo, made by Tony. Uh, taking the briefest look at the packaging, we see it is a very collector-friendly blister bubble style in that it is on the back, it's held in place on three sides by tape. So you simply cut the tape and then you can pull the blister back and get Mewtwo out without tearing up the card art, which is always an appreciated way to package toys. Um, you know, for people that want to collect and display them. With a really nice action shot of Mewtwo on the back, along with some other things you can get in the wave. Including, um, a lingering presence from the first wave, the Ash figure. Um, so yeah, it advertises 14 points of articulation. So let's, let's go ahead and give that account on the figure itself. Uh, Mewtwo features a ball-jointed head with really good range. Look at that which can look in pretty much any direction he wants to, and uh, it's enabled by this really cool soft, uh, soft rubber, I'm gonna go ahead and call that his external brain stem, uh, made possible not only by the flexibility of the material, but also the fact that it isn't really attached to anything in there. So you can de you deeply recess it to, to preserve the shape, but as you move his head, it since it's not actually attached, it, it, it has some give and leeway so it can pull itself out when you, tw when you tilt his head at a, at a more distant angle. And then when you put it straight again, you can just tuck it back in. So yeah, nice and accommodating. Except that that does create a little bit of a glue halo at the base where it's attached to the body. I guess um, attaching two different types of plastic is a little bit difficult even for professional factory manufacturers. He has a ball jointed chest, which also serves as his waist joint which has excellent range in all directions. Oh, and I, I love how he has that skinny little body that flares out into such gigantically massive hips. That's just wonderful. Um, ball jointed, um, uh, universally sh jointed shoulders have a pretty good range, limited only by the sculpt of his little chest thing, like that thing that looks like shoulder armor. He has elbows that go a full 90, and he has um, bicep rotation, so he can actually almost approximate crossed arms. Um, although he has no wrist articulation. Seems weird because like, like Mewtwo is a psychic character who's known for gesticulating and stuff. You'd think um, putting a little bit of a wrist swivel in there would, kind of, would, uh, would be a no-brainer. Although it is kind of adorable how one of his, one of his uh, hands is done up in that three-pawed pseudo-fist thing. The three-fingered paw pseudo-fist thing that he does. While the other one is in a more open hand like he's doing a psychic gesture with it. He has ball jointed hips, although they don't go that far out, but they do go they do go forward and backwards all the way. Although it looks kind of silly with how gigantic his tail is, and that is a freaking gigantic tail. 
Um, the tail has multiple joints. It has a it has a swivel here, nice and tight swivel at that. A swivel here, uh, and a swivel here, and a swivel here. So like, <laughs> like if you st if you make the joints all go, they can like like you can create um like holy crap. Like I'm not even I'm not even sure how accurate that is to Mewtwo's art, cause like, when has his tail been that freaking long? It's, it's like it's like almost twice the length of his entire body. And from what I understand, Mewtwo's a pretty big Pokemon. He's like human sized. I mean, like big for a humanoid Pokemon. You know what I mean? He's, he'd be like a pretty tall guy. So that's. Very, very impressive. Um, for a bit of comparison in height, let's take something that more people might be familiar with. The Mega Lucario figure. Uh, as you can see, um, Mewtwo is a head taller than Lucario, which kind of works. I believe this is more or less accurate scale from what we've seen in Smash Brothers. Oh, and I think now would be a good time to mention my ambivalence towards the Pokemon franchise overall. I really don't care very much about Pokemon. Um, I haven't played one of the games since Crystal. I have been openly vocal about my disdain for, for the third generation Pokemon. Um, although, the, although the fourth generation Pokemon and after look pretty good, but the third generation I hated. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, uh, and, like, Pokemon Shuffle is really the only Pokemon game I've ever given any real time to in the past decade. And I never even... I don't even have a smartphone to play Pokemon Go, even if I wanted to. Although, if I did, I wouldn't because I don't want to. But, um... But I am a massive Super Smash Brothers fan, and having a Mewtwo that perfectly scales with, uh, with the World of Nintendo line is just... Is just is just a uh, wonderful candy. So, having having someone that can that can stand next to that can that can stand next to and battle with car with uh with my with my Nintendo characters like Mario is uh is just wonderful. So even if they're made by two, even if this is well, this is a figure art. So um, it, it, but like it's just great to have cross compatibility between toy lines so whether you got a figure art um, a world of nintendo or tomi it's just wonderful to see these guys all put together um, at at prices that aren't that aren't rapingly expensive like how much does a d arts mewtwo cost at least forty dollars at retail and on and way hiked up on the aftermarket well well, this guy, I got him for 12 bucks. So, yeah. Um, and he is, he is way bigger and more imposing than the Sprue Kits Mewtwo, which up to now was your next best bet for an inexpensive Mewtwo figure. Uh, with, um, with better articulation. Well, he doesn't have the wrist joints that this guy does, but, um... You know, I think he, he has superior sculpting and uh, better range in the joints that he does have, especially in his legs and, and that epic tail that just allows him to tripod himself and stand, which uh, this guy can't do unless you get a very, very precise balance that I'm not going to try or use his included display stand. So this guy can pull it off without a display stand, and he looks freaking awesome. Um, so, yeah, if... Um, if you're a fan of Mewtwo, not necessarily because you are a Pokemon fan, but just because you're a fan of the character or other games that he's appeared in, you, you, you can really cut loose and, and enjoy yourself with a toy like this. So Mewtwo comes 100% Wake Angel 2001 recommended. Um, of course, this wasn't the only Pokemon hero that I picked up today. Stay tuned next time.